What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time you're watching. I really appreciate the support and the love from the community. It seems like yesterday we just had a couple thousand subscribers and now we have over 46,000. Pretty epic, pretty epic. So thank you guys. You guys deserve the, the smash of the thumbs up button. Not me, you guys do. Uh, we're in for a little treat in this video. I'm gonna do something I haven't done, I don't think ever on my channel, and that is I am gonna show you how, at least for me, a professional properly sizes a boiler for a replacement, all right? And don't get it twisted, all right? Don't get confused. There's only one real way to actually do a calculation to install a properly sized boiler. And we're talking about doing a heat load loss calculation. That's the only way of doing it. There's no other way of doing it. Yes, listen, you know, you can listen to, uh, you know, guys on like supplyhouse.com. It's recommended. You know, you take the square footage, you take what area you live in, you take age of the home, things like that. It gives you X amount of BTUs. You can listen to Bob Vila at this old house, right? But at the end of the day, the only real way of doing a, a calculation on the boiler that's needed for the structure, the home, is to do a heat load loss calculation, right? Um, I do one of two ways. I can do it with paper, and you know, I can use the Whale McLean Boiler Replacement Guide, which gives you step-by-step -step how to do that, or you can use an app. I use the HVAC Load Calc by Carmel Soft. Looks like this. A little uh, intimidating. Takes a little bit of a there's a little bit of a training uh, learning curve there, but it works for me. And it's also approved by PSENG Long Island. So when I submit a rebate under their um, co uh, home comfort program, uh, at least I have I have you know I did the right thing. I did the professional thing. So I'm gonna head over to this job not too far away in um, South Valley Stream Valley Stream. Uh, we've been to this homeowner several times. A few years ago, we replaced his air conditioning system uh, and we brought his Burnham boiler back to life last year, but now he wants to replace it. And I'm going to show you, we're going to measure room by room and we're going to get it done. And we're going to give this guy a true calculation of what's needed. So regardless if I get the job or not, which I probably am, right? Um, at least we can do the right thing. All right, so smash that thumbs up button in advance. And if you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it. Um, you may have watched my channel a few times, watched a few videos already. You may not even realize you haven't subscribed already. So when, you, when you're down there hitting that, that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. And if you would like to get post notifications of when I drop a new video, which is almost on a daily basis, hit that little notification bell. All right, guys, let's get going. Good morning. How you been? How was summer? Uh, can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so like I explained to you on the, on the phone, um, I'm going to take a picture of the few document the boiler. We'll measure the rooms of the house. Yeah. That way I'll have, you know, a reference point. I already know what size you need, but, yeah. you know, if you're paying me to do the right thing, I'm doing the right thing. Last year you called me, like, I think $10 for Bosch. I was telling the, I don't know if it was your wife or your receptionist. And I was like... You should have done it then. <laughs> I, said, I don't need a Ferrari, you know. I know. <laughs> I was like, I need a Toyota or something like that. Okay, so you have the power vented Burnham. Uh, there was a PV, PV5. Yeah, you tried to get the same one for me, but they don't manufacture it. Yes, yeah, so you got the the PV5, and you have the Ream Tankless water heater, non condensing, right? No, it's condensing. Yep, it's condensing. What are you looking to achieve? You just wanted something to slide in here, or you wanted to like to revamp this room, get get the closet back? Well, what would you like? What's the price difference? I know that it's a pain in the ass to put another machine in here. Well, the problem, the pro the, the wall, see, the, no the, space. Yeah, the problem with this, what, where the boiler is now, is that the two walls here make it a very, very confined space. And yeah. granted, I know you have makeup air above and below, but you still have a hundred and thirty thousand input. Yeah. BTUs of input. If you do the math, it's a lot of air it needs. And what do you have on the other side? You just have the two vents there and there. Yeah. There's nothing else giving this fresh air from out from the outside. 
So to do it the right way, right? Let's say you put another cast. Let's say we put another cast iron boiler right here. Let's say I get you a smaller footprint. Let's say we get you like the whale McLean, for example, a power vented whale McLean. I still have to address makeup air. So again, if you're gonna spend the money, like with the air conditioning, right? I tell it like it is. Like if you're gonna spend the money, you do it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna, not gonna, we're not gonna nickel and dime when it comes to thousands of dollars. You know, right. if it was like a dollar versus two dollars, that's a big difference, right? right. Like a, a bubble gum, for example, right? Yeah. But we're talking about thousands of dollars. So, if let's say it's like Mike, listen, I don't, you know, I, I don't have ten thousand dollars to spend. I don't want, I don't want to re reinvent the wheel. I want a boiler in there. Okay, I, the cheapest way of doing it initially is to put another cast iron boiler in here. But I also have to keep in mind distances from combustible surfaces. This wall, this sheetrock wall is technically a combustible surface. Mm -hmm. Technically, the back wall, that's cinder block. We also have some other sheetrock there as well. So let's forget the walls existed, right? If I put a boiler in there, I still need to give it fresh air, right. which you don't have enough of, even those, Maybe Van, yeah. to eight by twelve vents there and there. I just wanna for the guys. All right, mm -hmm. you still don't have enough air in this area with the door closed. It's impossible. Right. You know, I think it's one. You know, a BTU. Let's you know is the amount of energy required to round up to to heat a pound of water one degree. Yep. Right, and I used to think for a while it was one candle, but it's not. It's actually like six candles all right so if you do the math you still have let's say twenty thousand candles burning in this closet when the boiler's on okay that's crazy right so we need to bring makeup air and that's gonna bring that's gonna bring up more to the price right because now right the boiler comes on before the boiler comes on this can that sits on the floor right will suck in air from outside which if it's 30 degrees outside it's 30 degrees now in this closet yeah. Right, and now I got to insulate all the piping. You have the potential to ha create more harm than good because now pipes are going to freeze. Right. Okay, so at the end of the day, because of what we're working with, the best solution is to put a machine in that it sucks in its own fuel, from, its own combustion air from outside, and and of course you know vents outside. So and I think it. yeah, and I think your best bet is you know some kind of wall hung system. Yeah. Whether that's Bosch, which I love, you know, you can go with the I Bosch. Know. I know, I follow you on night. Okay, but you I know what? You but, as, but as, but as, <laughs> but as technology evolves and, and things get more and more advanced, right? They're not the only player in the market, and they never were. Mm. I just happen to like Bosch because I think it's a great, solid machine. Daniel went on one last week, ten years old, or maybe twelve years old, to do annual maintenance on this machine in Atlantic Beach, which is near the water, right? It's a wall hung system. The thing looked like it was brand new. 10 years old. It looked like it was brand new. That speaks volumes of, of the reputation of the product. I know, I know. But last... Okay, so now let's talk about, you know, realistically, yeah. right? So Bosch makes, you know, their flagship, which is the green, the green uh, therm. Uh, yeah, the green therm? Yeah, the green therm is their uh, condensing combi boiler, right? Yep. They also make a boiler only if you want to keep the, the tankless water heater. They also make a singular, uh, which is a, a much cheaper alternative, well, much, not much cheaper, but cheaper alternative. So Bosch makes two products that will be perfect for you in here. That's one manufacturer. We also have Whale McLean. Whale McLean makes this, this nice machine called the Ecotech, which is great for you because you have multiple zone, heating zones here. How many heating thermostats do you have? Uh, three. Three, right? You have two zone valves here. And I, so it was, I, saw, I saw the check valve there, but I saw the three return pipes in the rear which are right there, all three quarter, well, one inch and two three quarter returns right there, right? What's great about the Whale McLean Eco uh, Tech is that built into it, built into it, it can handle three zones. Wiring for three zones. I still got to do all the piping, all that other stuff, but wiring for three zones. And it's also a combi. What's different about Whale McLean uh, than Bosch, and there's one other manufacturer that, that, I, that I like that I haven't mentioned yet, but we'll talk about it in a second. The piping underneath, Right, on the Bosch, it's restrictive a little bit. Okay. Right on the Whale McLean, it's not. Right. So you have full one inch out of you know supply and return heating side you know, for space heating, and full three quarter on uh, domestic cold water and domestic hot water outlet on the domestic side. If you look at the Bosch and even Burnham, which I haven't even talked about yet, it's restrictive there. 
okay. right? Because they're actually uh, Burnham's machine called the Alta is actually import, you know the manifold, the hydraulic separated manifold is actually imported from Europe. Oh. And there, it's like I don't know, things are different over there in Europe. I tell you, <laughs> right? Very different than America. But um, listen, we have we have the imperial system, right? <laughs> they have the metric, so <laughs> forget them. All right, so you have a three zone boiler. We have we don't really have that much room here to work with, but you need to tell me what you want to do. How old is the Tangles water here? Uh, probably five years old. Okay. Have you been flushing out every year? You haven't flushed it out at all. All right, so, so when you come, you might want to flush it. Now, I, know, I you know, I know this is a, a very like I know a I know. loaded question to ask, but is there a budget that I, I need to stay stay within? And I don't expect you to answer it, but well, here, here here's the thing, right? Last year when you were here, I told you I'm not. Planning you're not spending ten. Staying, I'm I'm not planning on staying here. And now you're planning on you staying know? here? No, I'm still not. You know, okay, probably another two three years. Right. So again, I don't. I want something that works. I mean. If I'm staying here, you know, I go with your recommendation. I go Bosch. Okay. The, the greatest, right? Okay. But when I move, you know, if I'm still in the NASA area, you do Suffolk and things like that. A little that. bit of Suffolk. Yeah. You know, then I'll have you come in and do the Bosch for me. But like I said, I, I just want something that works, that's reliable, you know. Um, All right. Then as, as, as much as it pains me to say this. We're going to have to add a cast iron boiler. Okay. Right? Power vented. Okay. And. Well, what's the price difference between the Wolfgang and. Uh, I know that things have gone up. So here's the thing, right? If I give you. If I give you a, a ca traditional cast iron boiler, I don't have to redo all the piping in there. Okay. I got to redo some of it, right? To take this boiler out and put another cast iron boiler in. Right. But if I put a, put a wall hung system in here. There's only one place where it's going to fit, and that's that wall, which means I got to move over everything over. Okay. Which means I really got to... And, and this is not like I could spend... I'm being attacked by... Sorry, oh, sorry. by the... <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if I have to... It's not like it's a confined space. Right, it's not right. like I can work in here with two other guys, you know, another mechanic and a helper. It's basically just one person in here the whole time. However... I know, just hear me out for a second. Imagine, imagine you make this little, and I know you, you're, you plan on moving, but imagine, just imagine you make this corner of the house, you take, get rid of these walls, right? And you make this like, like a showpiece. Let's say money was no object, just for a second, and I'll, and I'll give you an idea of what that's gonna cost, right? Let's say we rip all this stuff out, I put a nice, I put a nice piece of wood or, or, or uh, black plywood or even diamond plate on the wall, Diamond plate is that like shiny stuff. Mm -hmm. It looks like diamond plate, whatever. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to explain. And I put one machine on the wall right there in the corner. You get rid of this wall here or you keep the wall there, right? But when your, your future buyer sees this, they'll be like, oh shit, I, I gotta buy this house now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first thing I like to do is make a chart. So let's make this chart. And we have room size. And we have baseboard. Can you get a laser measurement? Yep, I got it. All right, so we're gonna start with this room here. We have a small piece right here. We're gonna take a measurement of the room. All right, so the second floor hallway was three by 11. I have two feet of baseboard, slant fin number 30. A big thing to remember about that is that every foot at four gallons per minute will give you 610,000 BTUs at 180 degrees of water. If I slow that down to one gallon a minute, the rate of flow, I'm only gonna have 580 uh, 80 BTUs per linear foot at 180 degrees. If I drop that 180 degrees to 140 degrees, significant difference, right? 40 degree difference, one gallon a minute will give me 320 BTUs, four gallons, 340, so not much of a difference there, but let's crank that up to 150. You're gonna have 380, 000, 380 BTUs at one gallon, per minute and 400 BTUs per linear foot at four gallons per minute. So right here, we have two feet at 180 degrees, two feet at 180 degrees. Let's say we have, let's say easy, easy math, 1200 BTUs for this hallway, which is three by 12. And as you were saying, this area is cold. 
Yeah. Because this, this is not enough. <laughs> it's definitely not enough. But this room, which is 11 by 26, has 24 feet of baseboard, right? Let's do some quick math. So this room is 14,400 BTUs with 24 feet of slab number 30. And this room is comfortable. It is. Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So I, as you can see, I broke things down into two different columns. And when I got downstairs, uh, I got a little messed up a little bit. But second floor, I documented the size of the hallway and the size of the large room, you know, square footage, and also the, the size of the heat elements that are in there, slant fit number 30. When I got down to the first floor, we have the original structure of the house, which is entirely in-floor hydronic radiant heat, <laughs> right? So in that case, I just took the measurement of the entire square footage of that area and marked it radiant. And then the kitchen, we had, I think, 14 feet of baseboard in a 15 by 17 foot room. So now I have all my data. I'm going to punch that into my uh, load calculation uh, app. And we're going to see what number we have as far as how many BTUs uh, this house has. Right, ladies and gentlemen, before I get started in showing you how I do the load calculation, I just wanted to share how we just got in a special delivery. Not only did I get a few brand new 40 and 50 gallon AO Smith water heaters and a few Toto Drake toilets, and among some other things, flu pipe. You need flu pipe, right? Flu pipe! Brand new. Winter 2022. Look at this. That's the back of a long sleeve t shirt. Long sleeve t shirt. This is the Mikey Pipes. Winter 2022 long sleeve tee. It's featuring the Bosch IDS 2.0 heat pump condenser in the back. If you ain't testing, you're guessing. And the front, full color, Pipe Doctor Home Services. Epic, epic. Ladies and gentlemen, I will get these to you out the door, to your door, for $21 in the entire 50 states of the of United States. To your door, one for 21. Or if you really want a great special, Delivered to your door, two for 35 bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, two Pipe Doctor, genuine, authentic winter 2022 long sleeve t shirts, two for $35 to your door anywhere in the United States. I'll ship that by USPS first class mail. Mikey Pipes don't disappoint, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the quality, look at the color on that. Look at me, it's me, Mikey Pipes. Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, you name it, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Leave a like, coin, and doge. My prices are insane. Email me, Mike, at MikeyPipes.com. Details in the description box down below. Now let's go calculate the load for this house. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now I'm back at the shop, actually my home office. And I put together, well, I calculated all of the numbers. So let me show you what we have here. Um, but I also want to stress the fact that uh, it actually says it right here in the Whale McLean Boiler Replacement Guide. And this should not... This should not, there it is, there it is, right there. This should not be, you know, written in stone. This, you know, things change, but there's nothing like doing a manual J calculation. One thing to keep in mind when dealing with hydronic heating with an existing structure, where it's replacing the boiler. Um, we could measure, you know, all the rooms. We can measure all the windows, the heights, skylights, windows, Direction of north, azimuth of the sun, um, type of insulation in the in the walls. But at the end of the day, um, if we have ten feet of baseboard, right, in a room, right, we know that ten feet of baseboard will give approximately six thousand BTUs of heat output, and that's given a hundred eighty degrees of hot water running through three quarter inch tubing with the aluminum fins on it, right. And again, approximately, right? Because we do know that it's based on flow rate and based on temperature. So 180 degrees, like I said earlier, four gallons per minute. This is straight from Whale McLean. Four gallons per minute is 610 BTUs per linear foot of slant fin uh, number 30 to I think it's number. Let me look it up for you. That's I mean, let me not let me not guess. We're gonna actually gonna check. Here it is. Here is the slant fin rating chart for residential baseboard. Now you can see here element number 30 to number 75 baseboard with a three quarter inch and they call it the E75 element. 
Here's our temperatures for low uh, temperature, low low uh, low temperature boilers, right? So if below 150 degrees, you know 145, we are gonna condense, right? And on a cast iron boiler, that's no bueno. So this highlighted area in yellows, 110 to 140. Uh, look at the BTUs at one gallon per minute at 140 degrees, 320, 320 BTUs. But when we jump up to 180, right here. Right, one gallon per minute, we're at 580. Four gallons per minute, we're at 610. So for for sake of argument, we're gonna use 600, um, 600 BTUs per linear foot of slant fin number 30, uh, fin two baseboard. All right, so we have my second floor room. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, it says here crystal clear as day. Now we're dealing with an existing structure. If we're dealing with a new construction or major renovation and we're replacing the heating system or installing a brand new heating system, yes, you have to do a low calculation. You have to determine exactly what that room needs because guess what? You're going to install the heating. If it's baseboard, you're going to install elements that's required of that. If you're putting in uh, in-floor hydronic heating, right? Guess what? Three quarter inch pecs, 10 inches on center, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're done. You're done at 120 degrees. The room is nice and toasty. That first five and a half feet of that room is going to be nice and toasty. I've done it many, many times. It works, works perfectly. And it's the, it's the most efficient way of heating. Okay? But it says here right here. In most cases, it should not be necessary to make a detailed calculation. But if it is required for any reason, use the latest ASHRAE handbook, right? And you're going to use this book, which I have here. Where is it? Oh, hold on, let me go get it for you guys. All right? You're going to use this book right here, the Residential Manual J Calculation, right? And as you can see, I have a few tabs in there because guess what? When I took my test in South Carolina, right, there was four questions on doing a low calculation with skylights for Columbia, South Carolina. And guess what I did? I took an educated random guess, right? And I wasn't bothering wasting my time with a book like this. Why? Because right now I have access to, where is it? An app right here by Caramel Software, right? I have access to an app now. I'm not gonna waste valuable time answering questions when it's really not that important on a test, okay? But if you're doing new construction, major renovation, and you need those low calculations, you got to do it. Okay, my second floor room. We had a size, and I have the numbers here. We have a size. We had a size of 11 feet by 26 feet, right? And that gave me a square footage of 286 feet, okay? I had 24 feet of slant fin number 30. Uh, 24 feet times 600 gives me 14,400 BTUs, which is a zone. Right outside the second floor room, because it was just one big giant room, we had a hallway. That hallway was three feet by 11 and I had two feet of baseboard in there, and as you could tell, 1,200 BTUs is just not enough for that room. Not enough. Um, when we went to the first floor, my first floor was divided into two zones, one being a high temperature in-floor radiant. I'm saying high temperature because the radiant zone, right, leaves the boiler and comes back to the boiler in one inch with no thermostatic mixing valve. And... I did not know this as we're sitting there talking, you know, for the first five minutes of the service call. Uh, I had no idea he had rated. No idea whatsoever. And once he, we got downstairs and he told me I got rated. I'm like, huh? You got rated? I'm like, I didn't see any mixing valve in there. Uh, and sure enough, he didn't. And as I left the house, I asked him, I was like, you know, is the floor hot to the touch? He goes, eh, not really. So I don't know how deep or how well installed that radiant in-floor system is. So for the sake of argument for this particular calculation, we're making the radiant heat, right, considered high temperature. So that's 672 square feet. We're using 800, 180 degrees. And that gives me a little under 30,000 BTUs at 20,568 BTUs required. Kitchen, 17 feet of baseboard in a 208 square foot room gives me 12, uh, 10,200 BTUs. So that's giving me a total BTUs of 55,368. 
And I took the liberty. I did a little a little bit of few calculations right here, right? And let me just make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better. Let's see if that's enough. There we go. Bingo. Okay, so let's focus on here right now. Um, these are the three models, sorry, four models. And I forgot about Lock and Var, but those are the models that I would recommend. And that would be the Lock and Var Noble Fire Tube Combi. So my apologies, Mike Knapp and Lock and Var. Show me the love. Maybe I'll be less forgiving. All right, let's start with uh, traditional cast iron. There's only one that I would recommend, and that would be the Whale McLean CGI-4. That gives you a gross uh, IBR output of 66,000 BTUs, which is perfect for this installation replacement. From there, um, keep in mind, if I'm putting in a cast iron boiler, I need to address makeup air, and that will be done with fan in a can. When I put fan in a can in, I use fuel controls. The Here it is, fan in a can, CAS4, combustion air system. What really makes this thing great is that it wires to the boiler, and when there's a call for heat, the fan in the can system will come on, the proving system will turn on, proving that the air is fresh air being brought in from the outside into the boiler room. The one negative effect is that now we have potential subs, you know, sub freezing temperature being introduced into a confined space which is po supposed to be insulated right condition space and we have the potential of freezing up things it's does it happen absolutely have i ever seen it happen absolutely will it happen again absolutely so if i'm putting in fan in a can now i also need to insulate the piping bringing more and more expense when you factor in all of these um scenarios it makes perfect sense to go with a reliable and dependable wall hung system some people some viewers in the trades even armchair technicians right now watching this video you know the armchair technicians they're sitting in their armchair they're lazy boy they're typing away like wall hung junk mikey pipes wall hung junk well that can't be any further from the truth you know what some manufacturers are more prone to problem problems in case in particular, you know, the manufacturer that I used to love and install many, many, many times for many, many, many years. I thought it was a great product, a really, really great product until it wasn't. But nonetheless, if we're doing a cast iron boiler, we need to bring in fresh makeup air. And hence, field and controls, fan and a can, CAS4 for that. Now, let's talk about three potential systems for this customer. I am actually going to recommend either the Bosch Singular 4000 or the Whale McLean Ecotech um, ET880. Yes, ET80. One thing I don't like about the ET80 is that it only has an 8 to 1 turndown ratio on the modulating gas valve. And unlike the uh, more advanced, uh, more higher capacity models, we have a 10 to 1 turndown ratio. So that's the one thing I don't like about the Ecotech 80. I've never installed one. I've looked at one. Daniel and I took one, almost took one apart. If they would have let us, we would have really gotten balls deep into the system and we would have been taking it apart. Um, Bosch Singular 4000, it is their introductory combi system manufactured by Bosch. Granted, it's made in South Korea. Granted, it's made in, in uh, the similar factories of other South Korean companies out there. But it's a Bosch, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Bosch. And let me tell you something. If Mike Holmes endorses a singular, guess what? Mikey Pipes endorses a singular as well. It's a great product. We've installed a couple of them over the last couple of years. I think it's a cost-effective solution. If money is no object, and some cams it isn't, you go with the Bosch Green Star Green Star, Green Therm, I keep getting those confused. No, it's the Green Star. The Green Therm is the tankless, the Green Star is their flagship model. Here it is, the Bosch Green Star, wall hung boiler and combi. And also, you know, the part of the Bosch ABC program, program is the Bedaris, right? So you have the Bedaris, the GB162, great machine, and we have the Singular. Right. 
So let's go back to here. And for U.S. Boiler, let's not forget about our folks over at U.S. Boiler. Burnham makes the Alta. I would go with the 136. And like the singular 4000, we have a modulating gas valve. With the Alta, we get, go down even lower to 13,600 at a minimum fire rate to as high as 120. Yes, I know 120 is way overkill. But when we have multiple domestic hot water demands, the Alta 136 will be a much better uh, suited for this home. Even though they have one bathroom, we do have one bathroom, we do have a washer, we do have a kitchen, um, and the, we do have a, a rather large home with multiple occupants. Sad they only have one bathroom, it should be more, but it is what it is. So there, ladies and gentlemen, are the three recommendations, sorry, the four recommendations that I would recommend for this home, replacing this um, PV205 uh, by Burnham. There it is. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like me to create more, um, more educational content like this, for example, like how I size a boiler, now, we're not talking about a furnace, we're talking about a boiler. A boiler uses flame to heat water. A furnace uses flame to heat air. So when we're doing, when we're heating with a furnace, you know, we're doing a low calculation. And listen, if the house needs 80,000 BTUs, you want to get as close to that without going under for the furnace, right? For a design temperature of 70 degrees that we utilize here in New York. All right, guys and ladies, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. I would really, really appreciate it. And it helps me helps me motivate me to, to create more great and amazing content like this. And I really am humbled, so humbled by the community. Thank you all. 46,100 46, subscribers. Epic, guys. I couldn't have done without you. Until next time, be well. God bless. Stay safe.